question that's often levelled is that we're so violent, we're so aggressive. Why are we so violent? Why are we so uh, aggressive? You know, surely God should be stopping that. God should be doing something about that rather than just letting it carry on. And the answer that comes back, it's, it's nearly always the same answer, and it boils down to free will. What they say is God has given us free will. If God was to stop us being violent, God was to stop us being aggressive, what he would have to do, in fact, is to limit our free will. And God doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to limit our free will. So I want to look into that response, and I want to come up with some arguments against that response. There are 101 arguments, in actual fact, you can come up, against with, come up to that response with. God's sake, Jim, get your worms right. There are a hundred different arguments you can use against that argument. That's what I was trying to say. I'm not going to use a hundred arguments here. It bore you to fucking tears. But I'm going to use a few. The first is, what does that say about God? Uh, God is supposed to be omnipotent, and yet what people are saying here is that the only way he can give us free will is by making us really rather violent. And um, that doesn't seem like much of a much of a demonstration of his omnipotence unless he actually really wants to make us violence he really that's what he set out to achieve in the first place but that's a bit of a boring argument isn't it so i want to look at some slightly more interesting arguments and the first thing i want to talk about is whether we should blame god for it because this is what it boils down to this argument doesn't it nobody's saying god doesn't exist because we're violent what we're saying is what does that say about god so i want you to imagine that i'm a dog breeder Okay, and I'm going to take some of the most violent dogs that are out there. And I'm going to selectively breed these violent dogs, just as people have done for other traits in dogs throughout the years. And I'm going to try and breed myself an ultra-violent dog. A dog that just attacks people, attacks other dogs, probably attacks itself if it's bored. Okay, all it's going to do is just be aggressive, nasty, violent, snarling. And I'm going to sell these dogs to people. I'm going to sell them dogs to families and single people and all sorts of stuff. And it's going to maul babies. It's going to maul its owners. It's going to maul itself. And people are going to bring these dogs back to me. And the police are going to come knocking on my door. And they're going to arrest me for selling these dangerous dogs. And what I'm going to say is, don't, don't hold me responsible. Don't hold me responsible. If I was to have done anything out less, I would have limited these dogs free will i've given these dogs free will i've given these dogs the chance to be violent it's the dog's decision to accept it don't blame me well this is the argument that people are making on god's behalf that that when we're violent don't blame god he's just giving us free will any more than don't blame that dog breeder for breeding that ultra violent dog but we all know that the dog breeder had a choice don't we he could have bred the dogs slightly differently and the dog would still have had free will. We don't grade the amount of free will a dog has based on how aggressive the breed is. We don't say a, a golden retriever is a dog with very, very little free will. Uh, and we don't say an American pit bull terrier is the breed of dog that has the most free will. That would just be ridiculous. Nobody looks at it in those kind of terms. All these dogs have just the same amount of free will. Free will is not an issue in that kind of sense. And what are we actually sort of saying about free will here when we talk about violence and free will like this? It's almost as if we're saying that, that, that violence is like the hallmark, the rubber stamp of, of free will. You know, if there's a sure sign, if you want free will, you need a good old dose of violence. It's not a very edifying concept, really, is it, that we're going to try and equate things in those terms. Let's look at some other arguments here. I've made some other little arguments just to expand on this a little bit more. Let's drag it away from the dogs back to human beings, back to me and you. It's quite interesting. We can, we can judge each other now. Let's judge each other. What about men and women? You know, we know that men are much more predisposed towards violence than women. We see it in all societies. Men are more aggressive. Men are more violent than women are. So what we're saying then, what these Christians are saying, is that men have more free will than women. Women don't have as much free will as men, because otherwise they'd be more aggressive, would they not? Well, if they're not saying that, then what they must be saying is that women just aren't predisposed to violence in the same way. You don't have to be predisposed towards violence to have free will. We'll go back to that argument in a minute. I'm going to make you up a little graph. I'm going to overlay a graph here. And what this next graph is going to show is how much a man's free will alters as he gets older. 
So here's the graph. The graph will be up now. I'm just assuming the graph is up. So you can't even see my face. I can pull any kind of face now. You can't see it because there's a graph there. As you see, as a man gets towards puberty, his free will is increasing. As he gets to his early 20s, his free will is starting to maximise. And then as he gets older, I'm in my mid-30s now, my free will is very, very much on the decline. And by the time I get into my 70s or 80s, I'll have virtually no free will whatsoever. Well, this is what Christians are saying when they make this argument that God cannot limit, it cannot limit our violence without limiting our free will. So I wonder why they make this argument. And the only real justification I can see for making this argument is if you totally blink yourself to the chances that people can be predisposed towards anything. We all happily admit that a dog can be predisposed towards violence and aggression. You can breed a dog for that. We're all happy with the kind of concept that, that men can be more predisposed towards violence than women. But if men can be more predisposed towards violence than women, then surely humans can be predisposed towards violence. So how about this God? God, if you're watching this video, how about this for an idea? How about you give human males the same free will as human females? Yeah? How about that? Give them the free will, but make them slightly less predisposed towards violence. Huh? Is that a good idea? Did you miss that one, God? Or could it be that there's no God and none of this is anything to do with God whatsoever? Whichever is the case, this silly argument that you cannot have free will without some kind of predisposition towards violence is an absolute nonsense. And it won it's an argument that needs shooting in the face. Thank you very much for listening.